Periodontal disease is the number one diagnosed problem in small animal patients today. By the age of two, 70% of cats and 80% of dogs have some form of periodontal disease. Most people think of periodontal disease as bad breath and tooth loss. However, there are much more significant problems, not only locally within the oral cavity, but also systemically throughout the entire patient. And we will discuss that in a few minutes. This is a picture of normal periodontal tissues on the lower jaw of a dog. There is no calculus on the teeth. The gingiva is coral pink in color with no redness or inflammation. This is a radiograph of a normal lower jaw in a dog. Note that the bone fills up the area between the roots as indicated by the red arrows and it comes all the way up to the neck of the tooth indicated by the blue arrows. This is a drawing that represents your pet's teeth. This is the crown of the tooth, or the area which you can see. This is the gum line, and then these are the roots, or the area that you cannot see. Periodontal disease is initiated when bacteria attach to the teeth in a substance called plaque. Plaque is a biofilm, which is a layer of bacteria. These bacteria act differently than bacteria floating around in the environment. They basically act as an organism. Plaque is very resistant to medications, and therefore the best way to remove it is by brushing. Eventually, this plaque will get up underneath the gum line and start causing inflammation. This inflammation is called gingivitis. Here is a picture of a patient with early gingivitis. You can see the calculus on the teeth, as well as the redness and mild swelling to the gingiva, as indicated by the arrows. This is a sign of infection, and this patient needs dental care now. If the previous patient is not treated, the gingivitis will progress to a patient who looks like this. He has increased calculus on the teeth, as well as severe swelling and redness. Additionally, you can see the pus coming out of the gingiva. Gingivitis is a significant problem, as the gingiva is inflamed because the capillaries are leaky. The leaky capillaries allow the plaque bacteria access to the bloodstream. Once the bacteria enter the bloodstream, they will go to all the vital organs, such as the heart, the lung, the kidney, the liver, and the brain. This causes damage to these vital organs over time, decreasing their function. Periodontal disease of this level has also been implicated in other severe systemic problems, such as cancer and diabetes. Over time, the plaque will become calcified by the minerals in saliva to become calculus or tartar. This is the brown stuff you may see on your pet's teeth. Here is a picture of a patient with severe dental calculus. Unfortunately, most people equate calculus with dental disease. While it can be a sign of disease, it is not as accurate as the level of gingival inflammation. The level of inflammation and not calculus should be used as the indicator for need of professional cleaning. Over time, if not treated, gingivitis will progress to periodontitis. This is where the bacteria go deeper and deeper into the supporting structures of the teeth. These are the periodontal ligament and bone. The deeper the bacteria get, the more virulent they become. Here is a picture of a patient with early periodontal disease. Note the significant calculus and gingival inflammation. Now we are seeing early gingival recession as indicated by the arrow. And the body, in an attempt to wall off the infection, will start to recede the bone. So if we take a radiograph, what we're going to see is areas of bone loss. Here is a dental radiograph of a patient with mild to moderate periodontal disease. You can see the bone loss surrounding this first molar as shown by the arrows. Once the bone loss occurs, it is very difficult to impossible to get the bone back. If we do not treat it at this point, unfortunately what occurs is the bacteria go deeper and deeper and deeper. This patient has severe plaque and calculus, gingival inflammation, as well as recession. In addition, you can see pus coming from the gingiva. This patient is significantly infected both locally and systemically. This will lead to tooth mobility and eventually, if unchecked, tooth loss. Here is a radiograph 
of a patient with severe periodontal disease. Note the severe bone loss affecting all teeth on this arcade. There is almost no bone surrounding the two premolar teeth, as shown by the blue arrows, while the large molar tooth has about 30% of the bone remaining. All of these teeth are loose and need to be extracted. Eventually, these teeth will fall out on their own, but they have caused significant problems before then, as we will discuss next. The most common severe local consequence of periodontal disease is an oral nasal fistula. This is most common in small breed dogs, especially dachshunds. This is a view of the patient laying on its back. Here are the maxillary canine teeth. Here are the upper incisors and then the upper premolars. This is the nasal passage right here. As you can see, there is less than one millimeter of bone between the tooth root and the nasal cavity. Looking from the side, again, here's your maxillary canine tooth. As the disease eats up the bone, it breaks into the nasal cavity, and this is called an oral nasal fistula. It'll happen right here and right here on the inside surface of these maxillary canines. As you can see in this photo, the remainder of the periodontal tissues can be relatively healthy. The only way to treat an oral nasal fistula is to extract the maxillary canine and create a flap of tissue and then take this tissue and move it over the fistula and suture it. This is what a closed oral nasal fistula should look like. Another severe local consequence of untreated periodontal disease is a pathologic jaw fracture. This is an image which shows a lower molar in a small breed dog. This is the width of the mandible here, and then this is the root of the lower first molar. You can see how close the molar root comes to the bottom there. This is a dental radiograph of the lower first molar of a small breed dog. Note the minimal amount of bone below the front root, as shown by the arrow. Also, note the curve to this root, which will make extraction very difficult. In contrast, this is an image of a large breed dog's lower first molar. As you can see by the arrow, there is significant bone below the tooth roots. This makes this dog more resistant to pathologic fractures. Periodontal disease will typically occur very severely right here at the back of this tooth. And what happens as it progresses over time, the bones will get weaker until it eventually comes down here and causes infection. And then what has happened is that you've gone from bone from here to here, and now you only have bone from here to here. And that's kind of like a toothpick. Here is a dental radiograph of a patient with severe periodontal disease of the lower jaw. As you can see, there is minimal bone left at the bottom of the front root of this molar. In fact, it is only 0.3 millimeters thick at this point. This jaw is very susceptible to fracture at this point. This tooth must be very carefully extracted to avoid fracturing the jaw. Also note that the tooth on the far left is only being held in by the calculus bridge to the tooth behind it. So if this tooth takes any trauma, the jaw breaks right there. And unfortunately, that is a very difficult situation to treat. Here is a dental radiograph of a dog with a pathologic fracture of the mandible. Note the separation and bone loss as shown by the dashed white and black arrows. Also, notice the infection to the front root as shown by the solid white arrow. Pathologic fractures cannot be diagnosed without dental radiographs. In cases of pathologic fractures, healing cannot occur without extraction of the diseased tooth root. Here are a few examples of cases treated elsewhere, including very invasive means such as pins, external fixators, and even bone plates. Most of these cases have had numerous surgeries without success due to the infected root. This is a radiograph of a patient who has had his jaw fractured during an extraction attempt at a clinic without dental radiographs. 
This is the post-operative radiograph of the case, which has excellent reduction and a very good prognosis. This is another patient whose jaw was fractured during an extraction attempt at another hospital. Here is the post-operative dental radiograph showing excellent fixation. Another potential complication of periodontal disease is eye infection. This is a radiograph of the upper molar teeth in a dog. As you can see, the roots of the upper molar teeth, as shown by the blue arrows, rest just below the eye, which is outlined by the red circle. This can damage the delicate optic tissues and can threaten your dog's sight. Infection to these teeth is evidenced by the bone loss shown by the green arrow. Here is a picture of the patient in the previous radiograph. The draining abscess from the infected tooth has resulted in the loss of his eye. This is another patient who lost his eye because of periodontal disease. He has been in severe pain for months, but was not properly diagnosed and treated until we took a dental radiograph, which is seen here. Prompt and proper therapy could have saved his eye. Periodontal disease can also cause abscesses to form, even when the tooth looks relatively normal, as seen in this picture. The infection eats its way down one root of a multi-rooted tooth and kills the tooth, as shown by the red arrows. And the infection will then spread through the tooth via the common pulp chamber, as shown by the green arrows. And finally, will cause a draining infection on the other roots, as shown by the white arrow. This infection can cause a draining abscess or swelling as seen in this picture. Periodontal disease can also cause a severe bone infection called osteomyelitis and can result in the death of the bone. In this picture, you can see the severe infection of the bone. Here is the radiograph which shows the left side being dead and infected, the right side being normal. This patient lost half his jaw because of periodontal disease. And finally, the inflammation from periodontal disease has been linked to an increase in the incidence of oral as well as systemic cancer. As you can see, periodontal disease is a significant health problem for your pet. Not only does it cause severe local consequences such as jaw fractures and eye loss, it has also been shown to negatively affect the kidney, heart, and liver. It is linked to severe diabetes, as well as an increased incidence in local and systemic cancers. It has been also shown to increase the risk of early mortality. Therefore, it is now known as the silent killer. However, periodontal disease is treatable and preventable, and proper care has been shown to reverse some of these systemic maladies. Please watch our video on periodontal therapy to find out the best way to protect your pet.